then what on earth does it mean to understand the whole system? To do so, we need to distinguish two different types of thinking. Conventional thinking, which is, by the way, the kind of thinking that we were all trained in in our traditional educations. Traditional thinking, more linear thinking, is actually very appropriate for simple problems. If I cut my hand, put a Band-Aid on it, I'm done. Simple problem, simple solution. But those are certainly not the kinds of problems that you folks are concerned about. What you're concerned about are those chronic, complex problems, often that we keep trying to solve and seem like it's one step forward, and maybe we're back at the beginning or one step back. How do we deal with those problems? Now, systems thinking sounds very esoteric, very intellectual. But let me assure you, it is child's play. In fact, we all start off as children, as nat natural systems thinkers. Let me give you an example. How many of you when your children were young, found yourself picking up after your children? Oh, that's good. Several of you are willing to raise your hands. OK. So this is how it works. I'm going through this right now, by the way. So here's my son, Jonathan. And his clothes are out on the floor. And says, yeah, I don't feel like doing anything with them. I'll just walk away, see what happens. And here my wife and I are. And there's that pile of, of clothes on the floor. We told them to put the dollar stuff in the hamper. But no, he's not doing it. And it's still there. And finally, I'm a neatnik. I can't stand it anymore. <laughs> And Jonathan comes back. Oh, that worked. Nonlinear cause and effect. Very good at it. So let's draw some distinctions between conventional and systems thinking. By the way, for those of you who are involved in K through 12 education, systems thinking is in lots of and increasing numbers of K through 12 curricula. And the kids adopt it very, very readily. Conventional thinking. The connection between problems and their causes is obvious and easy to trace. If people are starving, it's because they don't have enough food. However, in systems thinking, the relationship between the problems and their underlying causes is not so obvious. In fact, we say that the causes of complex problems are often far removed in time and space from the symptoms as they appear. In conventional thinking, when something doesn't work, it's because others, either within or outside our organization, are to blame. It's climate change. We can't do anything about climate change. As opposed to, from a systems perspective, when things aren't working, we come to think that there are, we start with the premise that in some way, we unwittingly are creating or contributing to the very problem we're trying to solve. Now, we don't say this to now blame ourselves, but actually to empower ourselves. Because if we can see how our thinking and behavior is contributing to the problem, then we actually stand a chance of changing our own thinking and behavior, which, by the way, is hard enough, much less wishing they would change. A policy designed to achieve short-term success in conventional thinking, if it works in the short run, it's also going to work in the long run. 
If we provide the food aid, that will then keep people fed. From a systems perspective, most quick fixes make no difference at all in the long term or actually make matters worse. In food aid, one of these unintended consequences of providing food aid is it depresses local food prices. Because how can the farmers, local farmers, compete with free food? When local food prices are depressed, the incentives for local agricultural development decline. And when those incentives are not there, this country or the area is vulnerable to more starvation down the road. Traditional thinking, the engineering perspective. In order to optimize the whole, we have to optimize each of the parts. So for example, with food aid, well, if we could just make the food aid more efficient, then things would get better. As opposed to, in systems thinking, if we want to optimize the whole, and Vicky made strong emphasis of this, we have to optimize, improve the relationship among the parts, which is very different than optimizing the parts themselves. What is the relationship between the donors, the local farmers, those people in big ag, big agriculture, population control folks, environmentalists? It's that broader system that needs to work together in different ways. And finally, the tendency in conventional thinking is when things aren't working, just do whatever you can. Anything is going to move the ball forward. So we aggressively tackle as many different initiatives as we can think of. In systems thinking, we learn that systems actually pivot around what we call leverage points. Those few places in a system where sustained attention to a few key coordinated changes over time is what makes the difference, not trying to do all of it.